Hello and welcome to this video uh, from the Moore Mountains. I'm on Luke's Mountain, one of my favourite little summits. It's about 400 metres high and it's a good challenging test for lots of different tents because uh, it's very exposed to the wind. I'm going to share my thoughts today on my Heli Bergner Match 2. So I must also mention I've actually previously owned a Heli Bergner Match and I sold it because I didn't like it and now I've actually bought another one and I actually really do like it. So a little bit more on that later. So in this video, I will look at an introduction to the tent and why I actually purchased it. I will look at ease and speed of pitching, although to be fair, uh, I will be kind of summarizing that because Heliberg show you exactly how to do that during full uh, storm conditions. And I'll add a link uh, in the description of this video to that actual video. I will look at weather resistance and that's actually my favorite subject for a four season tent. I will look at ventilation and airflow and that is my least favorite subject for a, four, for a four season tent. I will look at comfort and livability. I will also look at suggested improvements. Although I am honestly a Heliberg fanboy, there's no tent is perfect and all tents can be made better. And last but not least, my final thoughts on the tent. So why did I buy this Heliberg to Match 2? All right, so I mainly do most of my camping on summits. I mean, even now in the summer, I'm on a summit. Um, and it's just a bit windier and I enjoy going up and having a bit of a thrill just with the wind. I don't like going out in ridiculous conditions, although there's a few occasions when, like most of us, I have been. Um, and under conditions like that, I want to know that I can rely on my, on my shelter. Now, the Hilly Berg the Match, you know, is a black label Hilly Berg, so it is designed for the harshest conditions. And I like camping on summits here in winter because I enjoy camping on snow. And you don't get snow in the valleys here in Northern Ireland, you have to actually camp on the summits so i like to be able to go out and choose where i can camp and not be restricted where i can camp because of the actual weather conditions now i previously owned uh, quite a few tents but my tent prior to this was a black label heliberg solo and it weighed 2.8 kilograms and i sort of thought you know and a match is 200 grams more with significantly more space and maybe not just as strong, but in reality, you know, I may not be going out in, in wind warnings anymore because it's just no fun. I like to go out, have a bit of wind, but I don't like going out when it's so serious and I'm not going to get any sleep. So I sort of thought if I had two, two tents sitting there, then a match at three kilograms and a black label so at 2.8, which tent would I take for the majority of my trips? And do you know what? 99.9% .9 of the time, it actually would be this. Now, also for me, durability as a factor because uh, if I buy something and spend quite a lot of money on it I want to make sure that it will last and the durability and strength of the 10 millimeter poles here and the heavy duty fabrics I think like I mentioned before actually fitted me perfectly. I also want a tent that I can manage and set up very very easily on my own and the outer tent first pitching of this tent the fact that it just has two poles uh, it's very very fast and easy to pitch pretty much in any conditions. Now, I have got a link to uh, a video of Hillyburg actually, how to, and the, the video is called How to Handle Your Tent in Strong Winds. And I don't think there's any other manufacturer who shows you how to do that. They all show you pitching their tents, and they're pitching it in somebody's back garden or a, a, a park somewhere, and the conditions is, is, are absolutely perfect. You know, if you haven't seen it already, have a look at Hillyburg where they show you how to pitch a tent in pretty much full storm conditions with one person. And the measured wind speed that they have is 70 mile an hour uh, vestibule into the wind and 60 mile an hour, you know, from the side. And that really lets you see the storm worthiness of this tent and how it's easy to manage in high winds. In Northern Ireland, we have um, quite a lot of sheep. Um, it's dry and I've got some wipes with me, so I don't mind uh, removing it. But, uh, well, sorry, I don't mind removing it. I'm definitely going to remove it. So that, that's been that's been there for a while. I'm going to kick this here away with my feet. 
uh, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, fresher, I should say. I don't mind taking my tent out in serious weather conditions, but I don't like getting it dirty, particularly from crap. And of course, while I like the flat grass, the sheep like it too. But anyway, we're pretty much good to go. Uh, in a setup of a tent, I never really show you. There's no point in showing pegging out the tent. Uh, I've actually just got it pegged out the back. It's not really that windy at the moment. Um, and I've got my poles ready to go. So it's an outer first tent pitch and everything just pitches it at once. So even if you have a footprint, you have a footprint already attached and the footprint, the inner and the, and the um, fly all kind of got together. So it's very, very straightforward. And as I said, Heliberg, show you how to do that better than me. But, you know, I've kind of got it ready to go. So we'll show you a little bit. So at the back of the tent here, just on the windward side, I just had the guy lines already out, so I just have to tweak them up a little bit. Now these are longer, or sorry, are shorter than I would like. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the ground here is very rocky, so they'll be trying to adjust that later on. And then this one here is pretty much good to go, and that's just supporting the tent uh, into the wind. It might change the angle of it a little bit, but it's not. It's not. Um, it's not too far out at the moment. So really not an awful lot more to see, apart from just popping the guy lines out. And that's it, good, good to go. So the interior volume, and I suppose what I would call the livability inside this tent, um, is pretty good now you know as i said earlier the walls here are relatively vertical particularly you know at the lower end so when you're lying down you know you've got decent enough space and i'm kind of right back now that my head is touching the roof but it's just touching it and it's not pushing the inner of the tent against the outer of the tent uh, which is good and you know i'm six foot one can stretch out you know the general volume here is pretty good now mattress wise I use a, a, a Nemo, and I'm going, I'm going to actually review this. So it's the uh, it's a tensor it's a tensor insulated, and it's the uh, what is it the regular wide. I've only just got it, so I'm not that familiar with it yet. But it's the regular wide, and I've measured it. I actually could get two of these regular wide. And I'm not sure what width it is. You'd have to look that up, uh, or if you ask me in the comments, I'll look it up and I'll, I'll let you know. But I could get two of these mattresses in here, so you know the length in this tent is actually really really good now the issue so not the length the width in the tent is really good the issue i actually have here is is the length so i'm just going to lie on top of the mat and on top of my sleeping bag and my feet now like are right at the door and my head like is is now obviously i've gained a bit of height here but not that much my head is actually you know is actually touching now i have slept in this in this direction just because of the ground and it's all right i mean i'll change the angle on this and hopefully you can maybe see it a little bit better yeah so that's a bit of a change of angle there and it do fit but it's right against me you know so it, it just doesn't work that well it just slopes down quite quite quickly so turning things around a bit uh, this is me now with my head obviously at, at the front of the tent and this here is vertical you know which is great 
but again you know my head's pretty much you know touching it here and if you look down at my feet my feet are nearly touching you know the bottom of the tent so for taller users you know I'm as I said I'm six feet one and I don't really have any issues in this I can always manage um, but it just depends you know some people really don't like any part of themselves touching you know the inner of the tent uh, I don't mind you know too much it doesn't really bother me but for taller users you know I would think you know if you're thinking about one of the other Helleberg tunnel tents you know maybe the KDM because it has vertical walls at either end and that like makes a massive difference to the internal space you know in the tent so one of the amazing features of this, tent, of this tent is the actual vestibular volume so I've now actually got you know the tent done up completely um, and I have no issues here at all cooking um, I just boil up some water I've got a 70 litre pack here in the vestibule to kind of just demonstrate you know the space that I have but there's just so much length width height and, and total volume here uh, and as I said even if you've got the tent pitched for stable into the wind and there's a bit of deformation here from the front porch um, you can still cook in this thing you know absolutely no no problem you know so it's very very versatile from from that point of view but it's not as versatile as, as a twin vestibule tent would be uh, but then that's just adding to your weight and it's just all about some compromises I suppose so another hot chocolate and just to let you know the wind has died i wouldn't say i'm getting eaten alive by midges but there's a good few so don't be laughing um, it's just a bit annoying i must admit now if you were doing a video whoever you are and i was watching you getting eaten alive by midges i'd probably be laughing myself so you can actually have a bit of laugh a bit of a laugh it's certainly not bad enough at the moment that it's going to shift but it's one of those things if you've ever been out here and it's just like it doesn't take much wind <laughs> and it just it's just died on me completely but look i digress <laughs> might interrupt my train of thought mind you but anyway look why Helleberg? i've had a lot of tents over the years i've been wild camping for 25 years okay and i always used a lot of inner tent first again I've probably mentioned this before and i always seem to manage but it just got to the point where I'd had a, a particular, and it was a north face tent, and you had to stick the inner up, and then you had to attach the fly sheet to the inner with Velcros. And there were a few occasions when I used that under really harsh conditions. My hands were absolutely freezing um, because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get, it was windy, and I couldn't manage the Velcros with gloves on. So I had to take the gloves off. My hands got really, really cold and numb I couldn't feel a thing and then like I even cut myself on my, on my pegs uh, somehow and I didn't even wasn't even aware of it because my hands were so cold but once you've had an experience like that and it just doesn't work and it's been so bad it just puts you off so I kind of moved on to outer tent first pitching uh, and you know I've, I've now had probably my hands on at least 10 hillybergs and the construction of them is absolutely fantastic you know they're not mass produced and anything that's not mass produced you know the price i'm afraid just rockets but the construction is so good and if i'm going to go out and I'm, you know a shelter you know if i have a pair of boots or something fail or a jacket isn't as good as it could be it's not the end of the world um but if, if my tent fails when i'm in a sort of a remote location that's you know kind of a big deal so for me i want something that i really know i can rely on and i can really really trust now um i kind of lost my train of thought now so bear with me a moment um i also just feel that there is no evidence anywhere of cost cutting and you know i like that uh, and the Helleberg tents they really 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 hold their value so if you're thinking of purchasing one and you purchase it and you know what it for whatever reason it doesn't work out for you you can sell it again and pretty much get you know the money that you paid for it so they hold their value <coughs> extremely well now durability is, is another i think i've swallowed a couple of midges so that's why i'm coughing durability is another issue for me <coughs> and the fabrics are just tougher than most what most other manufacturers use 
Sorry, you're gonna have to excuse me. So where was I? Yeah, you know, the fabrics in the Heliberg tents are really, really durable. You know, for example, the fly sheet here, fly sheet here is double silicone and silicone on both sides. And that generally in the industry is accepted that it is a bit more expensive, but it is stronger than a silicone PU combination. When you add a PU or plastic type coating to the fly sheet, it makes it waterproof, but it makes it more rigid and then it actually tears more easily. So some manufacturers, you know, are really trying to push up the waterproof rating because that sells tents. Um, if they can say, well, our fly sheet has a 10,000 millimeter hydrostatic head, for example, but it, then when you do that, you reduce the actual tear strength. So, so Heliberg don't do that. It's a double silicone fly sheet. The ground sheet, for example, has a 20,000 millimeter hydrostatic head, and that's pretty much the highest in the industry. Now, I know there's a Mac pack tent that I think boasts 25,000, um, but you know, waterproofing is important, but it's also the actual durability and puncture resistance. A 100 denier ground sheet is one of the thickest found in any tent. And I know that this tent will, will last and it will last the test of time. And when I'm gonna invest a lot of money on something, I wanna make sure that I'll do that. Now, Heliberg could easily use lighter ground sheets and drastically reduce uh, the weight of their tents. And that would probably make them sell more tents in the short term, but in the long term, they wouldn't last as well. And I want the support a manufacturer that thinks about function and durability purely over just selling tents. Right, suggested improvements for this tent. But one area where I'm actually going to have a go at Hilliburg, and do you know what? I know it won't make any difference because if you're selling enough of a product, why do you need to change it? But it's simply in the pockets. Hilliburg, you give me two miserable pockets in this tent. You will say it's because of the, something to do with the weight or some other reason. I'd, I'd love to actually hear it. But do you know what? Mesh were, weighs grams. So give me an extra two pockets, you know, for this tent. Um, don't even make them any bigger. I'll settle with an extra two pockets just to make the tent a little bit more comfortable. Because some of my North Face tents and Mountain Hardware tents have about eight or ten pockets. This has got two you can definitely do better. And if you're saying it's the weight, then do you know what? Instead of giving me 18 pegs, give me 16 pegs, and I'll find two pegs from somewhere else, because most people would have two pegs. So you can kill the weight thing by giving 16 pegs instead of 18, and you still have easily got enough pegs to pitch a tent, and I don't know that anyone would complain. I think tent manufacturers in some respects are really, really lucky, because you tell me what industry in the last 10 years hasn't developed so much that the products have needed to be changed. Look at cycling. Cycling will change quicker in a month through the due technology than what these tents will in 10 years. You know, so I reckon this tent probably hasn't changed in 10 years. And I think the company, yes, there's been more competition, but I mean, how lucky is a company if they can sit and just keep making the same product for 10 years and still do well with it? So that's my rant over. I am a Heliberg fanboy. That's because of the experience that I've had and the reliability that I've had from these tents and that won't change and it won't affect me buying the tent. But you know, it'd be really nice if I had four pockets instead of two. So why did I buy this in the match um, six, excuse me, six or seven years ago and sell it and now I've actually bought another one? Okay, six or seven years ago, the bottom line is I was fit enough um, because I was six or seven years younger I was fit enough to carry a four and a half kilogram tent. And I was comparing the Namach against the likes of the North Face Mountain 25 and Triangle 2, and Mountain Hardware Triangle 2. And like I said before, you know, I always seemed to get them pitched okay. And in our first, always seemed to manage, because I just picked the nights that I went camping. With this tent, I can go camping at any time. But when I bought the Hilliburg, I was comparing a three kilogram tent against a four four and a half kilogram tents and there are some compromises and the main compromise that i found was the flapping and the noise in high winds my mountain 25 just stood in high winds and it didn't move the pat because there were four poles supporting a similar structure the panels were very very small the ones of, uns of unsupported fabric and it just resisted the winds so well and made no noise 
and it always looked really, really comfortable in extremely high winds. And, and I just loved the tent for that. But, and I was always comparing the match against the Mountain 25. You know, the Mountain 25 had 10 or 12 pockets, was significantly quieter in high winds and didn't flap and was so much more comfortable. And when I bought the match, I was still fit enough to carry the Mountain 25. So it just didn't really do it for me at that time. And maybe, you know, I hadn't enough experience of tents. And maybe when I was using the match, it didn't just have it guyed out perfectly, you know, etc., etc. But it, I just decided that I preferred the Mountain 25. I think if I was fit enough, I would still would be using uh, a Mountain 25. Although the pitching thing sort of um, kind of just get to me. The other issue is that when I was bending poles on my Mountain 25 many years ago, and I sent them to North Face, North Face just replaced them for a charge. Now, when you when the, my last experience on my V25 when I bent poles, uh, that not only did they not replace them, they actually didn't even have any poles to replace them, and I couldn't get them replaced. So that just became an issue as well, because if you are using a tent in extreme conditions, um, you probably will eventually end up damaging it, but you need it repaired. And if the company doesn't have a repair service, then you know it, that just does, kind of doesn't work. So I hope I haven't lost you in that now, but um, you know there are compromises with everything. And now at the moment, you know three kilograms. I want the strongest three kilogram tent. And when I look at this tent as a three kilogram tent, and look at all the features that it has in strength, durability, uh, and interior volume, ease of pitching, all of those things for a three kilogram tent. It's amazing. So that's that's kind of why and I'm really happy with it now. So these poles are incredibly strong, but if you want to make the tent even stronger, you can actually double pole it. Now, uh, I have a Hilly Berg Act 2, and the Hilly Berg Act 2 poles are the same length as in the match. So I can double pole this with a 10 mil pole. You can double pole it with two 10 mils, but I can double pole it with a 10 mil pole and an actual 9 mil pole. Now, I've referred uh, quite a lot to the video that Hilly Berg make. And I think it's called handling your tent in in strong winds. And I said the links in the description. Um, but if you look down through some of the comments there, the Heli Berg actually say that if you're looking for a tent to be really strong in the wind, that their strongest tents in the wind are black label tunnel tents, double pulled. So again, that's one of the reasons why I actually bought this. It's a black label tunnel tent, and you can double you know pull it if you need to. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea of, of the aerodynamics of the tent here. And at the moment I would say it's about a 10 mile an hour wind. But there is quite a lot of surface area, you know, that catches the wind. And I think it, it isn't really helped by the size of this actual vent. So for me, I would personally maybe have this vent, you know, a little bit smaller. And I would maybe just extend this vestibule out a little bit more just to sort of make it more aerodynamic. Um, now, you know, there, there are no issues, but it just makes the tent a bit, you know, noisier when it's kind of catching a bit more wind than it could, than it, than it could do. Um, the guy line here, you know, gives this hood, you know, really, really good support. But what you will find is um, that when it's windy at all, that this will kind of flatten. And even actually under snow load, this is going to flatten as well. And it pushes the inner and the inner will touch the sorry not the inner the outer will touch the inner of the tent now you've got extra gang points here not extra, extra not get gang extra pegging points you know just you know here but the issue here again is that i don't think it makes a massive difference you know now i've got something to say about this you know later on in the video and in fact how i would like these to be changed a little bit but we'll talk about that later on so looking at the front of the tent here again it's pretty aerodynamic but it still does catch a reasonable amount of wind. And again, I think that's down to sort of large wind at the front. But then that aids in ventilation. But anyway, um, I found that if you're pitching this tent in high winds, it is actually best. And Hillyberg also recommended the pitch vestibule in the wind. Because with the size of the vestibule, even if it deforms a little bit in high winds, you've still got enough room in the inside. And I'll show you now, I mean, this is the vestibule under high wind conditions, 40 mile an hour winds again. And I was actually still able to cook and had enough space in the vestibule to do everything that I needed to. Um, so that actually works, you know, really, really well. Now, I don't really have the opportunity to test these tents under snow loading, 
but there's no doubt that you know with the strength of the fabrics and the tent's got pretty vertical sidewalls characteristics of a tunnel tent so you know there's going to be no weight of snow here on the wall or sidewall of the tent and a vestibule if, if it's really like aero too aerodynamic then you get a lot of build up on the snow at the foot and you lose vestibule space and it's a lot of extra pressure in the tent but if the vestibule walls are quite steep which these are then it makes them really really good to snow loading the only thing that i would say is that um you know you, you have some compromises here with with the lighter weight and you've got quite a lot of flat roof and uh, if i was in the tent uh, you know prevention is always better than cure and i had a lot of snow on it was wet damp snow i'd actually be getting out in the middle of the night i know it's not that comfortable to do it but i would be getting out and making the effort just to clear the snow off the actual roof of the tent so my favorite subject ventilation the four season tents look uh, all joking aside though the ventilation on this tent from my experience is absolutely excellent you really do have a big vent here it's held open under any conditions with the supporting guy line but also wire in the hood here uh, and it just scoops and sucks air up and there's one of these in the front one also at the back i'm not even going to show you that it's just exactly the same it's exactly the same size and it functions really well to get good airflow across the top of the tent um Hilliberg believed that for their four season tents the fly sheet should come right to the ground uh, i think it's a good idea it seals out you know snow and spin drift and if you're getting a lot of rain and it's coming down the tent from an angle if you have a gap here it can kind of hit sort of the bottom of the tent and splash up into the inside so when you're sealing something out you also do seal in moisture when you're sealing it out uh, so this ventilation in this tent you know is really really good you know uh, first class as far as i'm concerned so just maybe finishing on ventilation for the inside of the tent uh, really good this is a good vent here at the back you know so you can have this uh sitting open and roll up if if need be so that gives you good protection and good ventilation and then you can open this you know further and you've also got access on the outside then to to the outside of the tent so a bit of a change of angle because i think there are less midges at this side of the tent so now really it comes down to my final thoughts on this Hilliburg to match two. Okay, so I've owned a tent for about six months and um, I have to say, you know, I'm really, really pleased with my purchase. I've used it, you know, quite a few times and it's, it's just, I think you have to learn to trust it. When you see it in the wind and you see the sort of deformation in the wind and it seems to catch a lot of the wind, you sort of think, hmm, how well is it doing? And I've had it out in the 40 mile an hour winds. But then when you look at the poles, and the poles just, they're vibrating, but they're just not moving, you sort of realize, you know, this tent is really, really good. So for the durability, the space, you know, the three kilogram weight, you know, for me, it, it, it's perfect. I can manage that amount of weight on my own. Uh, it gives me really good comfort, and I can depend on it. It's reliable and durable, and if it does come to a point where I'm not using it or I don't like it, I can sell it for pretty much, you know, uh, what, I, what I paid for it. Um, the Hilly Bergen you know, service is really, really good. Um, and if you have any problems with a tent, you know, the, the backup, you know, it's very, very good. It's a small family run business. Um, and as I said, I've handled 10 or so of their, of their tents and they've all been absolutely perfect construction wise. So really, really happy. And, and if I'm not at any stage, I absolutely promise that I will, um, that I will put that up or add that in the description somewhere in the video. But look, next up, um, I've been spending a lot of money lately uh, and buying different things. Uh, one of those things was, uh, you maybe didn't see it, but it was my, uh, new, got a new rucksack. And I've been using Osprey rucksacks for years and years and years. And I have an Osprey Oregon 70, which is the one up from the ether. I don't think they actually make it anymore. And I loved it. But I changed it and I got a Granite Gear Blaze 60 and I absolutely love it. It's one of the best pieces of kit that I've purchased in I don't know how many years. So I'm going to review that. Um, I'm also going to review, I've got a, a, someone who has offered me a Hilliburg Kedium 2 GT or Kedium. So I'm actually going to review that and that'll probably be my next review. 
And on top of that, I've changed and moved over from Thermarest to Nemo. So I'm going to do a review, you know, on, on, that, on that as well. Uh, I've got another new torch coming up from Lead Lenser, which I'm going to review. And I've got a new stove coming up, hopefully from, from Fire Maple. So that's just what's coming up, you know, next. Um, hopefully it'll be a bit quicker and I get the video out. And it's been a bit of time since I've done my last video. So look, thank you very much for watching and not long then for the next review.